The first rule for building your best golf bag is what I call the 80% rule. And this is something I basically stole from a Tom Watson Golf Digest tip that I read a number of years ago. What he said in that piece was, if you have a shot that you can't hit 80% of the time in practice, let's say a, a high draw with a four iron, then you shouldn't attempt that shot on the course because it's probably not going to work. The way I apply that to equipment is to say that if you have a club that you're not going to hit well 80% of the time, it shouldn't be in your bag when you go out to play. So that could be any number of clubs for any different player. Uh, that could be low lofted woods, low lofted hybrids, long irons, could be very high lofted wedges, uh, could be your driver. I'll give you an example. The other day I was playing with a gentleman who hit his three wood no less than five times because he was consistently 200 or more yards from the green and every single time, five out of five times, he rolled the ball 50, 60 yards. That club was not helping him to be successful. So he would have been much better off taking that club out of his bag. Now, I'm not saying you need to take those clubs and throw them away. You can put them in your practice bag and work with them on the range until you become proficient with them. That would be a great thing to do. But when you go out on the course, if you're really looking to shoot your best scores, you want to take the tools that you know you'll be successful with. So that's where I get this 80% rule from. Now, depending on your ability, you may want to modify the percentage or your definition of hitting it well. So for myself, I like to stick to that 80% rule. And for me, hitting it well with, say, an iron means plus or minus five yards. Now, if we're talking about a player who shoots in the 90s, who's trying to break 90, maybe they're going to use a 70% rule. And they're going to say uh, that hitting it well is plus or minus 10 yards, or just on the green, or something like that. So you can modify this rule to fit your game but you don't want to carry clubs out there where you're saying, eh, well, I'll just try this because maybe it'll work. That's not an approach you're going to see any good players take, so it's not one you want in your own game. The last thing I'll say about this is you need to be honest with yourself if you're going to apply this process. Uh, there are a lot of players who say, oh, well, I, normally I hit my three wood really well. Well, I challenge you to go to the range and hit your three wood 10, 15, 20 times and mark down how many of those shots would you think are really acceptable on the course and do that three or four times over the period of a couple weeks and see what actually comes out of that data. Uh, and perhaps you're going to find that actually your three woods a great weapon for you. And if so, fantastic. But if you find that the reality is half the time you're rolling the ball and the other half you're actually getting good shots, you need to work with that club until it meets whatever standard you set for yourself. And my second rule of building your best golf bag is that you cannot have duplicate clubs. And this is something I see in almost every amateur player's bag, uh, particularly when it comes to their irons. They're carrying three, four, and five irons that all do the same thing. What I say is, You've got 14 clubs to cover literally an infinite number of possible situations on the golf course between all the different distances, different lies, different weather conditions, different wind conditions. The possibilities are endless and you only get 14 tools. Why would you carry two hammers? You don't want two clubs that do the same thing. And I'll give you my personal example. Uh, I stopped carrying a four iron about two or three years ago. For a while I was carrying it because I thought, well, when I hit it really well, it goes longer than my 5-iron. And it did maybe 50% of the time. But the other half of the time, because I hit the ball really low and I don't have a ton of club head speed, the 4-iron went the same distance as the 5-iron. And I eventually said to myself, this doesn't make sense. I could be carrying a different club that would give me different results and give me more shots in my bag instead of carrying two clubs that do the same thing. So I would strongly recommend that you look at your own bag and figure out, are you carrying two clubs that do the same job? Uh, and to do this, you're going to, again, have to be really honest with yourself about the distances that you hit your clubs. And I would recommend getting on a launch monitor to find out how far you hit your clubs. Almost any uh, range or pro shop or club fitter probably will have a launch monitor that they'll let you rent time on. And you can go on there and hit a bunch of seven irons and a bunch of six irons and a bunch of five irons 
to see how far does each club actually go and at what point do I not need to be carrying more irons? I need to be swapping in hybrids or fairway woods, um, or maybe it's the wedges. I actually hit, I've got a 56 and a 58 and they both go the same distance. Whatever it might be, you don't want to carry duplicate clubs in your bag.